this is a review for midterm number two our topics for this midterm are the synchronous generator excitation the equivalent circuit standalone operation the synchronous generator with infinite bus uh, the association of synchronous generator with synchronous generator the basics of synchronous motors the operation of synchronous motors starting of synchronous motors the basics of induction machines the equivalent circuit for the induction machine the power flow for induction machine and the induction machine torque you should expect three questions on this meter the topics are synchronous generator equivalent circuit and the synchronous generator with infinite bus the synchronous machines basics and the synchronous machines operation and also the induction machine equivalent circuit and the induction machine power flow your questions will be based on your homework set number three for synchronous generator equivalent circuit and with the infinite bus on homework set number four for synchronous machine basics and synchronous machines operation we didn't have yet uh, homework for induction machines however the lectures class notes and handouts will base a question on induction machine equivalent circuit and the induction machine power flow you have 50 minutes for this meter you should time your own progress and you should expand 20 minutes on question number one 20 minutes on question number two 10 minutes on question number three each question will have sub items and those are equally contributing towards your grade for questions one and two we have four items a b c and d for question three you have two items a and b so you have 10 sub items you should take five minutes maximum for each sub item in order to prepare for this meter take your time to read the book chapters in advance you understand further details and you enhance your own learning please review the handouts i gave you in class study and understand all the homework problems practice all the problems gave given in class you have always to understand how to solve an equivalent circuit and electrical circuits in general by hand and for this midterm, bring your own calculator. Let's have a problem now uh, based in one of the homework sets. Suppose we have a three phase 10 kVA 220 volts Y connected synchronous generator with armature resistance 0.25 ohms per phase and synchronous reactance of 5 ohms per phase uh, so because it's given phase uh, we are going to use a per phase equivalent model the field resistance is 5 ohms the measured losses are core loss 250 watts rotational loss 200 watts define the excitation voltage for case 1 2 and 3 below and if you suppose the excitation current is 8 amps at the unit power factor and assume that the excitation voltage varies linearly with the excitation current calculate the efficiency of the generator for case 1, 2 and 3 the three cases for this uh, generator problem are 0.85 power factor lagging 1 unit power factor and 0.8 leading power factor a synchronous machine has a, a very simple steady state per phase equivalent model 
and you can either use their field excitation voltage or their field excitation current in your model. So this box shows a model with the field excitation voltage on the left and a field excitation current on the right. We can use the model on the left and we can define by simple KVL the excitation voltage EF. EF is a VT, we can assume VT to be phase zero plus the voltage drop in your resistance and in your reactance. So we have EF is equal to VT plus IA multiplied by RA plus JXS. This field excitation voltage will have a certain magnitude EF with a certain phase delta. So for this very simple model, if VT is phase zero, the field excitation will be EF with phase delta. And we have a equation that relates active power and reactive power for those conditions. Please take a look in our book and in your handouts. You can find the terminal phase voltage and current for those conditions. So the terminal phase voltage is 220 divided by square root of 3. From the machine power, we can calculate the current for those conditions. It's 26.2 amps. This uh, problem will work in a very interesting operation for this machine. Suppose uh, your power factor will be impressed. So that means for a given power, that means for a certain active power, we will know the phase shift of current I IA in respect to VT. That's the power factor. We can assume VT with zero degrees. So that means for a constant active power operation, the magnitude IA is constant. We can calculate the field voltage for any power factor operation for the generator. See the next calculations. Uh, in general, for a constant power operation with a programmable power factor, if you just take the previous uh, uh, KVL equ equation, EF will be VT phase zero, so just use the magnitude of VT plus IA multiplied by the voltage drop. We can take the magnitude of IA and expand in a real part and an imaginary part. So we have magnitude of IA cosine of theta plus JIA sine of theta, everything multiplied by RA plus JXS. So we can expand, pay attention here to the equation. Uh, at the last line, I made a substitution for cosine of theta as uh, the power factor and sine of theta will be 1 minus the power factor. So you can use this general equation and from there we can define the algebra required for the calculation of the conditions in this uh, problem. So for power factor 0.85 lagging we can calculate the angle as the inverse cosine of 0.85. You substitute back on those equations and you find EF. So you have to take a look on these calculations and it's also in your uh, solutions that was given to you already. So the field voltage for 0.85 lagging is 2 28.77 phase 28.1 degrees we can do the same for the other conditions so for unit power factor of course the inverse cosine of one is zero so is the simple calculation that we had before you see here that we need at the last line, 187.2 phase 44.5 volts. 
for power factor 0.8 leading we have the inverse cosine of 0.8 is 36.9 uh, and if you use these conditions on the previous equation you can follow here the calculations and we need a field excitation voltage of 121.3 volts in magnitude phase 63.7 degrees so this problem is very interesting because we show that the generator will supply a constant active power with a variable power factor the power factor could be unit power factor could be lagging or leading that is one of the big advantages of synchronous generators we can program that a connection of a synchronous generator to the utility grid will help in uh, prescribing a power factor in a particular point of the installation uh, if we make the assumption that the excitation voltage will vary linearly with the excitation current this is not true uh, in real life we need to have some experimental work but if you make the assumption that it's a linear variation we can use this uh, equation here that is a ratio for your field voltage at unit power factor and your field current at unit power factor and we can find the field current that we need 9.78 amps so we can calculate the input power uh, it's given here by the field loss plus your stator core and output power contribution your output power is 10 kva multiplied by 0.85 because that's the power factor is 8.5 kilowatts so we find the other values that we need and if you plug all together we can find the efficiency for this uh, machine operating as a generator with 0.85 lagging power factor to be 85.5 percent this is also solved in your uh, solutions that I gave to you the homework solutions at unit power factor just follow the equations they are similar and efficiency is 88.6 percent if your system is uh, operating at 0.8 power factor leading we find the field current here by this uh, ratio uh, assuming that's linear with the uh, field voltage and given uh, that field current we can calculate the input power and the output power and at the last line here you see that this system has an efficiency of 87.9% so what's important in this problem is that you should know the KVL equation you should understand power factor which is the phase shift of the armature current in respect to the terminal voltage the terminal voltage we can say that's phase zero and using a simple algebraic equation and phase analysis we can define all the voltage and currents in this simple circuit and define efficiency field excitation current field excitation voltage and all the parameters for your machine to operate this is a very simple model but very useful and used by the industry 
let's now think in how this machine could work as a synchronous motor so let's say that this uh, there is another machine here also is a problem from your homework set let's say that this is a three phase machine one mega va 2300 volts 60 hertz it has a negligible state of resistance so we do not consider the contribution of ra and the synchronous reactants we consider to be saturated but we are not discussing the variation of the reactants in this problem but that reactance is 1.25 ohms at rated terminal voltage the efficiency of this machine is 0.95 at rated speed and this machine is connected to an infinite bus so we have a motor connected to an infinite bus and we are going to calculate three conditions here first we would like to know the reactance in PU because maybe we need a PU per phase model you have to remember that a per unit model is only useful if you define the base okay if your PU model does not have the base for voltage current uh, impedance uh, your model is not useful the second issue you want to define is the excitation voltage and the power angle that means delta of the field voltage when the machine operates at as a synchronous motor at 0.8 lagging power factor and the machine delivers 500 horsepower the field current is now reduced by 40 percent keeping the power output the same as 500 horsepower we have to find the state of current and the power factor in those new conditions and the question is will the motor lose synchronism so this is regarding stability of this machine a synchronous motor it's either operating at synchronous frequency or if we have any stability concerns it loses the synchronism so it's very important to define if the conditions of the operation are safe and the motor does not lose synchronism you see here that we are just taking 500 horsepower compared to one mega va it's uh, very small so i would suspect that the synchronous motor may not lose synchronous however we are reducing the field current by 40 percent so it would be important to calculate do we still have flux that will maintain the machine operating on that conditions and you may ask why do i want to reduce the field current usually we do that to improve efficiency in the real uh, applications so uh, if you want to find the PU you have to find the base we have here in this slide uh, the base voltage calculation the base current calculation the base impedance can be defined by one divided by the other so the x the reactance in pu is 1.25 divided by 5.29024 pu you can calculate your active power 500 horsepower we multiply by 746 and divide by 0.95 uh, we have this amount in watts dividing by the base power it's 0 0.3926 p 
we want to calculate the armature current. Uh, the armature current will be uh, the uh, power divided by the power factor. We can calculate the armature current in PU is 0.4619 PU. So we can use now uh, per unit per phase equivalent model. We know the base. We define the basis so we can calculate using the same circuit as before and we have that the field voltage is 0.9463 phase minus 5.71 in PU and you can multiply by the base voltage in order to have the final value here, 1256.6 volts. Phase shift is not changed by the PU model, is minus 5.71. If you want to reduce the field current by 40% and you want to maintain the power output to be the same, we can use the power equation to find the, the new conditions for uh, sine of delta prime and we calculate here that delta prime is 9.55 degrees from that we apply on the same equivalent model and we can calculate ia IA is VT phase zero minus EF prime phase minus delta prime divided by XS phase 90 degrees. So this gives 1.876 phase minus 77.87 PU. You can multiply by the base current is 470.8 amps phase minus 77.87 degrees the power factor is the cosine of that angle it's a uh, negative so it's 0.21 laggy in this course we did not study all the issues related to the stability of synchronous machines uh, this is important in more advanced class power systems and power systems operation so you may come back to this subject in the future if you take other courses however we can understand that the motor will lose the synchronism with the utility frequency if the mechanical output power is less than the maximum supported by the excitation voltage so what we do, we will calculate the maximum power under those conditions. We know that the machine is for one mega VA, but we now have here uh, conditions that can be calculated again. Uh, it's three multiplied by VT EF divided by XS. When you make that calculation, it's 2.4 megawatts. That means the machine can supply 2.4 megawatts uh, on, on the shaft in those conditions and we know that it's much less than that so the maximum power is way greater than this output power of 0.39 megawatts so the motor does not lose synchronous Induction machine modeling was discussed in our last few lectures. I gave you some handouts and I asked you to read the book. We will continue induction machines and induction generators after a meter. But it's very important that you understand at least the per phase model. It's not a PU model, it's a per phase model. So we assume that the machine is balanced, symmetrical, so we can take this model that you have in this slide to represent 
a machine v1 is the state of voltage i1 is the state of current e1 is the air gap voltage i m is the magnetizing current i2 is the rotor current you see here in this model that i'm not using prime in our class i use i2 prime r2 prime x2 prime and i told you that sometimes you do not use the prime so on purpose i'm dropping the primes here but you have to remember that those parameters for r2 and x2 they are the ones reflected from the rotor to the stator okay why we can do that because we changed uh, transformer model by changing the impedance seen on the rotor side so there was a transformation that was uh, proposed uh, in order to have the stator and the rotor side of this model with the same frequency so what matters here is that r1 is the stator uh, resistance x1 is called stator leakage inductance xm is the magnetizing inductance x2 is the rotor leakage inductance r2 is the rotor inductance we have a term here that's r2 multiplied by 1 minus s divided by s even though we use a resistance uh, the power dissipated on that particular device is the mechanical power so the losses here will be given this model by losses in r1 and r2 and the r2 1 minus s divided by s will give you the mechanical output power depend dependent on the slip ratio s we can lump together r2 with the modified the slip ratio modified r2 so if you add those we have r2 divided by s so i ask you to take a look on the handouts i gave you and to take also a look on your chapter and you see that there is a formulation that we can say that the rotor side is uh, x2 with just one resistance r2 divided by s when you do that we define something called air gap power we'll come back to more details on this after the meter so you can use either one you can use r2 divided by s or you can separate into r2 and r2 1 minus s divided by s so why do we use one or the other when you really want to calculate the losses in a rotor you have to split the resistance sometimes you use r2 divided by s the little box on your right uh, down because for example if s is zero r2 divided by zero will be infinity so i2 will be zero and if s is one we have r2 divided by one so we have two specific conditions for s equals zero and s equals one which is the no load conditions or the blocked rotor conditions when we measure the induction machine parameters we follow procedures that are described in books there are some test procedures uh, that are defined particularly uh, by IEEE standards there is an IEEE standard number 112 that helps uh, to find those parameters they are very similar to the methods used in transformers however we have to make some corrections that depends on the construction of the machine this is outside of the scope of the lecture but probably you have seen this in your lab those parameters can be useful in 
calculation of efficiency, losses, power factor, and can also be useful for models and control algorithms. Those parameters should be established in laboratory and we, we use a short circuit and open circuit conditions. If you want to find induction motor efficiency, you are going to calculate the output power divided by the input power. So we have here uh, two boxes, one on the left, another one on the right. They are similar, but uh, the box on the left, we are subtracting the losses in the machine. So it's uh, input power minus losses divided by the input power. So that's the efficiency. Uh, or we can use the box on the right where we are not using the losses description. We are using the mechanical output power divided by the input power. The mechanical output power is the power that goes through the sleep ratio modified R2. So it's uh, the rotor resistance multiplied by the rotor current square multiplied by 1 minus s divided by s and that is on the numerator the denominator is the input power so in that case we have to find the stator voltage multiplied by uh, stator current multiplied by the power factor the power losses in the induction machine are defined by those parameters here. The, uh, all the losses that we have in machine are the stator copper losses, the iron losses, the rotor copper losses, and we have uh, windage and friction and stray. So the stator copper loss is the loss dissipated by R1. The total in the machine because it's three phase is three times i1 square r1 the iron copper loss could be defined by the air gap voltage square divide by rm so rm represents the iron core losses we multiply by three because we take the per phase model and then multiply by three for the total machine the rotor copper loss is the dissipation in the rotor resistance. So it's three times the rotor current square multiplied by R2. The mechanical power is the power that we calculate using that uh, model. Uh, it's three times I2 square R2 multiplied by 1 minus S divided by S. We can also define our air gap power. So the mechanical power is one minus S multiplied by the air gap power. So this box here has important calculations that you can use in your per phase equivalent model. If your iron core loss are represented by resistance we call that rm maybe you can call rc as well usually because uh, we we want to lump the mechanical losses of your shaft and friction we can use just one resistor rc in parallel with the magnetized inductance okay so you have to you have to be very clear and specific if the resistance in parallel with your magnetized inductance is representing only the iron core loss or everything that means the iron core loss plus shaft and friction mechanical losses i would like to request you to take a look in your handouts and in your book chapter to understand this model I want to suggest a problem for your own understanding. Uh, take the equivalent circuit and draw the equivalent circuit for the conditions 1 and 2 below. So the conditions 1 and 2 below are a blocked rotor operation. That means we hold the shaft. Okay? 
we hold the shaft that means the mechanical angular speed is zero in that conditions the slip ratio is one and also two the no load operation the no load operation means that we turn on the machine we do not have anything connected to the shaft so we assume that the machine is rotating at the synchronous speed omega e so omega e is equal to omega m the mechanical angular speed so the slip ratio is zero s is equal to zero so draw the equivalent circuits for conditions one and two and suppose you have a machine with all the parameters find the input power factor and the efficiency for those two conditions.